Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming-related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that could be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. The first question for today comes from a lot of you, and that was that you wanted my opinion on the recent announcement that it looks like Xbox One is going to be getting a hardware upgrade, basically coming out with a new Xbox. Uh, if you're not aware, Phil Spencer over at Microsoft has announced that they want to make the console generations less static. So in instead of having a console come out every five to ten years, like they like they did with the Xbox 360 and the and the previous consoles, uh, they want to make it so that every couple of years there's going to be an upgrade to it, so that you can play the biggest and best games at the highest graphical fidelity. Now, some gamers had the concern, wow, I bought my Xbox One and now it's becoming obsolete. Like, what the hell are you doing, Microsoft? Like, this sounds like suicide for your console. No one is going to continuously buy upgraded versions of your console every couple of years, especially if they cost like $400 or $500. Like, this is madness. Phil Spencer has reassured everyone that your old Xbox One is not becoming obsolete. The only reason why you would want to buy this updated version is that it is going to give you more uh, power behind your gaming so that you can have those higher graphics or let's say you don't want to play the new game on 30 frames per second you want to play it at 60 frames per second then this new Xbox one might be up your alley now what's interesting to me about this entire thing is that it looks like Xbox might be making their system very similar to PC where you can swap in and out different parts to customize it to your liking if a new graphics card comes out instead of buying a brand new Xbox one you can slide out that that, that old graphics card slide in the new one and now you just have an upgraded uh, an upgraded Xbox one you didn't have to put down another five hundred dollars on a brand new box you just kind of slide in and out the different components that you want to upgrade and now you have a better system that could be very interesting it remains to be seen how they're gonna go about their business model they may just come out with a brand new box that does cost a pretty penny or they might go down this modular routes uh, overall though it's gonna be interesting to see how all of this plays out and if gamers, console gamers, are interested in this. I mean, really, this sounds like PC gaming. Upgrading your system every couple of years, and especially if they go the modular routes, it's like, why would I buy an Xbox One if I'm gonna continuously update it? Why don't I just buy a nice computer and go with that instead? So it's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. I can't think of any large glaring negative because it just gives more options, but it remains to be seen. The next question comes from James, and it is, in Rainbow Six Siege, what guns do you think need a nerf, and what guns need an upgrade. Honestly, the weapon balance in Rainbow Six Siege is pretty solid. There are a few exceptions, and we'll get to that here in a second, but I just want to say overall, uh, Ubisoft has done a good job here. Like, you pick up a gun, you know what you're doing with it, you understand its strengths and weaknesses, and you take advantage of those strengths, you're going to be successful in pretty much every single map. Like, there isn't really any gun that is just completely worthless. That said, though, the one gun class that I think could use a bit of an upgrade is the pump action shotguns. Compared to the semi-automatic, they leave something to be desired. They're not completely worthless, you can still get kills with them, but I just find that you really need to be on the ball and kind of play the maps appropriately if you want to secure any kills. They have a much slower rounds per minute compared to the semi-automatic shotguns. It doesn't seem like their damage output is any higher, and so it's just like, why would I use this compared to all of uh, the other shotguns in the game? So if I had to pick one class of gun that I think could use an upgrade, it would be those. As for nerfing, the first one that comes to mind right at the start is the SMG-11 pistol. The reason why this is too good probably is because it's got low recoil for how high of a rounds per minute that it has, uh, but also because you have access to the ACOG scope. I think if you eliminated the ACOG on it, it would be the appropriate nerf. It would still act as a secondary weapon, but because you can put an ACOG on it, it's basically a pocket sniper rifle. Like, if you're good with ACOG scopes and you see a glass out in the distance, and let's say you're running around as smoke, you can use his normal primary weapon to take care of people that are up 
close, and as soon as people start to uh, shoot you at long range, you switch on over to the SMG-11 with the ACOG scope, and you shoot them directly in the face. Like, it's just way too good. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen people just run around with this as pretty much their primary weapon, even though it is their secondary pistol, and still do magnificently well and reach the top of the scoreboard. It is absolutely disgusting right now. And so the first one on the chopping block, I would say would have to go to this gun, and really the only thing that I think needs to be nerfed is either just give it more recoil or just don't allow it to have the ACOG scope anymore. Uh, the last gun I would nerf is the Super 90 shotgun that's available to Frost. This thing is, is, is just too good. Its damage is too high, it has a high rounds per minute, I think it's got one of the highest RPMs out of all the shotguns, and its damage doesn't drop off very fast. I've been able to pretty much snipe people with this thing. I mean, I took a guy out that was like 50 meters away. Granted, he probably had low health, but the fact that you can snipe people at, this, at these distances with the Super 90 is absurd. I mean, I'm sure you guys have experienced this on numerous occasions. As soon as you realize the Frost is in the other room, you become terrified because you know one wrong false step. If you don't land that headshot, all he needs to do is, or she needs to do, is get a quick body shot on you and you're down for the count. The gun is too powerful. And while I know that some people will bring up the argument that this is how shotguns perform in real life, like their effective range in real life is a lot farther than most video games portray them, but you also have to remember that this is a video game. And in relation to all of the other guns in the game, the Super 90 shotgun for Frost is just too powerful in my eyes. And so if I had to decide on the two guns that I would nerf, it would definitely be the SMG A level and the Super 90 shotgun. Uh, the next question comes from Matthew and it is, do you think they should be able to put camos on your riot shields in Rainbow Six Siege? I would not be opposed to that. I know a lot of people have been asking this for quite some time because it just sounds cool to have that option. The right shield is a blank slate and it would be really cool if maybe you couldn't have a completely flamboyant. I think that they would need to tone it down for some of them. Having like a pink camo might be a little bit too much, but if you could have some cool customization options for the shields, that could be a really awesome customization option added into Rainbow Six Siege. The only the only reason why I could see them not doing something like this though is that it might have a little bit of an impact on the gameplay itself. Camos on your gun really don't do anything, but the shields are distinctive. Fuse's shield looks different from Blitz, and same with Montagna's. The color's different, the size is a little bit different, and as soon as you slap on some camos onto that, it might make it harder to quickly identify on a split second, as soon as they round the corner, what operator you're fighting against. If I don't know that it's Blitz and I think it's a Montagna, I'm gonna approach that firefight completely differently, based off the color of their camo. And so, while I really like the idea, I think it's cool, the reason why Ubisoft might be a little hesitant on this is that they've already put in the time to make the clarification, to make the distinction between all of the, the shield operators, and as soon as you add in this customization option, it may make it slightly more challenging in a split second decisions what operator you're fighting against and they may not want to go down that route. I do like this idea though. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. As always, if you would like to submit your own question that can be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below or by sending me a Facebook and Twitter message. But until tomorrow, guys, have a good one and take it easy.